Now that we understand what influences motion, it's forces, unbalanced forces, a net force acting on an object that causes it to accelerate, we understand that what we need to do to predict the motion of an object is to understand what the forces are acting on the object. Free body diagrams are a little accounting trick that we use to help us visualize the forces acting on an object so that we make sure that we the forces acting on an object so that we make sure that we remember everything. The point is acceleration is the way that motion is influenced by forces, so it's important for us to understand the forces acting on an object so that we can predict what the object is going to do. So then our initial question of how can we predict the motion of an object becomes how can we keep a good track of the forces on the object. As we said, free body diagram is a really convenient way to do this. What you do with the free body diagram is you look at all the individual forces acting on an object and you draw them. And then from that you can figure out what the net force is because of course the net force, which is what causes acceleration, is just the vector sum of all the vector forces acting on the body. We call it a free body diagram because we're looking at one body free from all others. And we'll see why that's an important distinction later on when we talk about Newton's third law. So what you show in a free body diagram is an idealized picture of your object, usually just as a point or a ball, and you just look at that body and the forces acting on it, nothing else. So here's how you make a free body diagram. You draw a point or a circle for the object itself, and then you draw arrows for all the forces acting on it. There are different conventions for this. The convention that the book uses and the convention that we're going to use in this class is that you always draw the forces as arrows pointing outward away from the object. Whether it's a push or a pull doesn't matter. The force direction is always outward away from. So here's an example of a simple problem where we're going to make a simplified free body diagram for it. So picture this. We have two crewmen pulling a barge along a canal. One's pulling at an angle of 30 degrees relative to the forward direction of the barge, and the other one, who is on the opposite side of the canal, which it obviously has to be, otherwise you're going to pull the barge into the side of the canal, and you don't want that, you want it to go forward. He's pulling at an angle of 45 degrees. There's going to be some drag, viscous drag on the barge backwards. The barge is going to maintain a constant velocity forward. That means that the net force is zero. What we're going to do is draw a free body diagram for the barge. We have three forces that we're going to worry about. We have the force from the first crewman, the pull from the second crewman, and the drag on the barge. So here's how we start off. There's the barge. Does that look like a barge? No, it doesn't. It's an abstraction. It's just a point. And we're going to direct all the forces on that point. That's going to be the forward direction so that we, remember we were given some directions of forces relative to the forward direction of the barge. So we'll just draw a little line for the forward direction so that we know where to draw our force vectors in relation to. We have a pull from crew member one, which was 30 degrees from the forward direction. And we have a pull from crew number two, which was 45 degrees from the forward direction of the barge. And of course we have drag that's backwards. One thing that we have to notice before we start drawing the drag in is that we want the direction of the barge to be forward. So we can't have any acceleration to either side. So the side to side, the only forces that have any side to side components are the crew members forces because the drag on the barge is directly backwards. The horizontal components of force one and force two have to be exactly equal and opposite. So we know that the forces from crew member one and crew member two cancel in the sideways direction, and then the drag on the barge will cancel both of those in the forward-backward direction. So how can we use this free body diagram? What do we do with that once we've got it? Just looking at that diagram that we had previously, we can make some geometric inferences about the, well, now that we have our free body diagram, what can we do with it? Well, of course, we're going to want to use it to help us analyze quantitative problems. Since forces are vectors, we're going to need to analyze the force vectors. We'll need to set a coordinate system, resolve the different forces into components. We'll apply Newton's second law in each direction. The component of the force in the x direction divided by the mass is going to be the component of the acceleration in the x direction. 
the component of the force in the y direction divided by the mass is going to be the component of the acceleration in the y direction. We understand that from just how we do multiplication of vectors by scalars. So here's an example of a kind of a problem that we can use a free body diagram to help us solve. This is the same situation that we set up the free body diagram for before, just that we've added one more piece of information. We've added the magnitude of the force of the pull from crew member one, and now we're asking what is the magnitude of the force from crew member two. Remember from what we had with our free body diagram that the horizontal, the sideways components of these two forces had to be the same. So the first thing we'll do is set up a coordinate system. Now I'm going to take these two force vectors and resolve them into x and y components. So that's what I've done here. We know what F1 is now. The magnitude of F1 is now 130 newtons. We don't know what F2 is. Um, rather than throw in what you know the actual number, I'm going to keep this fairly analytical um, because I find that easier for me to follow. So what we've got for the x direction for force one, in the x direction it's negative, so its magnitude is minus f1 sine 30 degrees, and the sine because this is a 30 degree angle, and the x direction in this case is the opposite to that angle, because here we're now we're doing the angle with respect to the y-axis. The y component of force one is going to be in the positive direction, it's in the plus y direction, and it's f1 cosine 30 degrees. For force two, the x component is in the positive direction, so it's going to be f2 sine of 45 degrees, and the y component is f2 cosine of 45 degrees. And we can see that again if we make a right triangle here. Um, so the opposite sign, opposite side of the triangle would be the sine of the angle 45 degrees. Right now we're not too concerned about what the y component is. If I were to ask what the force of drag is, we don't need to know the y components. But I didn't ask that. I asked what the F2 is, and from that the only information that we have to go on is the fact that in the x directions the two forces have to cancel out, so they have opposite x components. So here's how we'll set that up. So that the x component of force 1 plus the x component of force 2 add to 0. I'm going to substitute in what we had for those. So the x component of force 1 was minus F1 sine 30 degrees, where F1 is the total magnitude of force 1 and the x component of force 2 is f2 sine 45 degrees. Our next job is to solve this for f2. Algebraically what I've done is I've added f1 sine 30 degrees to both sides of the equation and then I divide both sides by the sine of 45 degrees which solves for f2. So f2 is going to be f1 times the sine of 30 degrees divided by the sine of 45 degrees. The last step I can just plug in all those numbers and that gives us 130 newtons for the magnitude F1 times the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5 divided by the sine of 45 degrees which is 0.7071 to give us 91.9 newtons as the magnitude of the pull from Crewman 2. So Crewman 2 is not pulling as hard as Crewman 1 and that makes sense because if he did pull as hard as Crewman 1 then there would be a net force to the right, at least it would have a component to the right and that would be dragging the barge into the side of the canal, which we don't want.